So we've built out this report. Again, took us a couple hours to do, or an hour really to do this. Um, but now we want to really empower the users. How can they answer their own questions? We already saw where we took our visuals and we built in drill down functionality for the user. Um, and that allowed them to look at that data, stayed in the same visual, but saw it in maybe a different level. You also have the ability to build in what they call drill through functionality. That's going to take you from one page of the report over to another page of the report or to like the transactions of the report. So in order to do this, um, I, I kind of like to just take my, my, the my report page and let's duplicate that. And so just right click and duplicate page. And then I'm going to rename the page. So right click on it and choose rename. And I'm just going to call it transa my transactions. So I want to build in this page, I don't want to show all these visuals. I want it to just show one visual with a table and show me a lot of detailed information or transactional information about those entries. So what I want to do here is in my transactions, we're going to just clean up this page a little bit. And um, I want to get rid of these different visuals, but don't necessarily want to get rid of everything. So we're going to get rid of everything except for our stacked bar chart. So to get rid of it, I'm just going to highlight it and hit the delete key on my keyboard, or you could use the ellipsis and choose remove, but get rid of everything except for your stacked bar chart. And we're going to make that take up pretty much the whole page here. And then we're going to change that into a table. So in your visualizations, go ahead and just make that a table. So if I was looking at this and I'm trying to analyze the data, I want to see more transaction detail. So, you know, what's important to me as I'm looking at this, what's not important to me. Um, I want to keep from the business unit table. We're going to keep the business unit description. We're going to keep the object count, but I don't necessarily need the region and the division. So I'm going to go ahead and just take those and just do that X to get rid of those. Um, I don't, I don't need the expense amount. We're going to actually look at some actual amounts. So I'm looking at GL transactions. So I just need the actual amount. So I don't need this. I actually don't need any of these fields. The rest of the way down. So I'm just going to keep hitting the X and get rid of everything. So I'm just starting with my business unit and my object. Now we want to pull in some of our detailed fields. So we're going to go ahead and go to the GL balances detail. It's our transaction information, and we're going to pull in some other pieces of information about these transactions, such as the document number. Um, so I'm down here. Right there, document number. I don't know why I couldn't find that in my... Uh, when I'm trying to go alphabetical, I all of a sudden was having all kinds of trouble there. Um, so there's the document number. I might want to add the document, some document type information. There's actually a table where we pulled document type out. So navigate back up to document type. And I could pull in the document type and the description from this table. Again, I'm going to go back to GL balances. And now I'm going to go find the GL date. Anything that would be useful to my user if they were trying to do some research to figure out where this came from, why it's there. Maybe I want to add the explanation field as well. And you can add as many fields to this as you need to or as few as you want. Now we're going to go back and we're going to pull in the amount field. But I don't want it to be um, hard coded to look at the revenue or the expense. I just want to know what was the amount that was entered in the GL transaction. So we're going to go back here to the actual um, NGL balances, and we're going to go to our uh, actual folder and just find the actual amount selected. 
And we're going to go ahead and look at actual units selected as well. So you might have statistical accounts in here. Um, you might have other accounts that deal with units. So um, we can add those units as well. If we wanted to see the units. But now we've built out kind of this transaction table. So if I'm looking at that report with the pictures and I want to know what makes it up, I want to actually see the transactions, I can do what they call a drill through to come to this page to see it. So how does the drill through work? What we're going to do is we're going to actually pass parameters over from one report or from one page of the report to this page. So um, in order to create that pass through value, we're going to just keep going in the visualizations pane as we go down. There's a section here called drill through and it says add drill through filters fields here. So we need to tell it what fields are we going to pass through to this table. So in order to add those drill through fields, we're just going to go to the business unit table. And where you see business unit and description, that field, go ahead and just right click on it and choose add to drill through. And then I'm going to do the same thing on business unit. I'm going to right click add to drill through and it's going to just put that field right down here for us and it kind of makes it expanded but what happens is now these are going to be filter values that get passed from our previous report into this report and we want to do this with all the different fields that we've defined here um, that were on our previous page or you know in our other visuals that we're going to pass into here so that we're really focusing in on that data so again, in the business unit field, I could go down, I could find division. I remember we used that field. So just right click, add to drill through. Um, let's see, and we can go down into other field. We had object account, so let's go to the account table. Navigate up to the account table and let's add that account, the object account and description. Now the fields do have to match. So if I had one field on my primary table where I had the values concatenated and it was the object account and description, and then I pass the object account, it doesn't know how to do that. So if I have those as separate fields, I have to actually pass those through as separate fields. So I might want to pass the object account, the description, and the object and description. That way, depending on which visual I'm on and it passes the value over, it has the right level in there. Now, I also know that in business unit, we use things like region. So I'm going to add that as a pass through. I'm going to add that subdivision as a pass through or drill through, sorry. So everything I want to pass, I just kind of think through when I built those visuals, on that first report, that summary page, what were all the different dimensions that I used? What were all the different ways I sliced and diced or looked at that data? And those I want to add as pass-through values. Once we add, actually once we added our first one, we immediately have a button up here that came in in the top right corner. This is going to be our navigation button. So when we drill to this page and it passes the values in, this will help us get back out. The other option you have on here is where it says keep all filters. This says whenever I'm on that primary report and I drill through, it's going to take any filter values and pass them in. So this is how it's going to pass in things like these slicers. So I don't need these slicers on the page anymore. I can go ahead and just delete those off. It's going to pass those values in as we come. Okay, ready to go see how this works? Let's go back to our summary page, our GL report analysis. I called it my report. Not sure what you guys called it on your page, on your side. I'm going to go to one of my visuals. I'm going to go to this first one for expense analysis. And I've got this Northeast region, my administrative expenses, 399,000. Just going to right click on that. And I'm going to go down to drill through. Now you'll see that we already had GL details in there that was built in in our sample report or you know for the solution. But I built my transactions. That was that page that we just built out. When I choose my transactions, I can see in here down where it has that drill through section. 
all of these different filter fields that get populated when I drilled through to this page and how it limits, it will limit my data based on these values that it passed in. So I can see that it passed in period 12, year to date, 2019, and there's that 399 to 18. If I go back to my report, I'm just navigating by clicking on the tabs across the bottom. I'm gonna go back to that first page. I'm gonna choose a different value. I'm gonna choose this 1.2 million, the sales and marketing expense. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna right click to go down to drill through and go to my transactions. And there I can see my, my um, sales and marketing expenses. And I can see all of the transactions. This was a year to date number. So you'll notice my GL date goes from January 31st. I'm just gonna click on it one more time to go descending to December 31st. So I don't have to scroll through all the transactions. I'm looking at a year to date number. So I'm seeing all of those transactions. That's the advantage of using these selected items and we're passing that filter parameter in. If I go back to my report, I'm gonna change my slicer now. And again, you guys can just watch me and then you'll have some time to play here in a moment. I could do a month to date number. And again, maybe this time, you know, I pick a different visual and I right click and I drill through to my transactions. And it's gonna pass those parameters in, but I was looking at a month to date number now. So now I just see transactions with a GL date of 1231 and I see my amount. So I can see what are the actual transactions that make this up. The more I drill in, the more parameters that will pass over to that other page, the more focused those transactions will be. Probably the most common use of that drill through functionality is to do what we're doing right here, to go from a visual and go look at a, another page with transactions on it. That's probably most one, one I see most often. Um, but you could absolutely pass over and go to another page of a report where I'm looking at maybe this analysis, but I pass over a business unit or I pass over a particular region and I see all of this where it's just focused on that region or just focused on that business unit. Um, maybe a sales rep, whatever it might be. But you could see, you don't have to go from you know, a picture down to one a page with one visual on it you could go to another page with a lot of visuals on it. So it just does again, is how are you answering the questions for your users, right? Um, whenever you build these Power BI reports, think of them as living documents, um, a living report. It's not like traditional report development where you get the specs, you build it, you sign off on it, and you move on to your next task. Uh, with these, we wanna always look at them and evaluate them and kind of ask ourselves, you know, I gave this to Adam, he looked at it, you know, immediately my phone, Phone was ringing and he was asking me, you know, what, why were our, what happened here? Why, why are we under in May or why are we under in April? What, what happened with our net income? Um, can I give him another visual or another report, another look at this data to help answer that question? And I want to build that in either with a drill down or with a drill through on these reports so he can answer his own question. He could open this report, he could look, he could just do some right click and get to those answers. That's ultimately where we wanna to get to with these Power BI reports. So they are gonna always grow and evolve and change with your business as you understand the needs of your users, how they're really using the functionality.